the wastebasket and the eraser are terrific. It's no crime in doing something that's not that fabulous and then getting up and doing it again. So if you're trying to improvise or you're trying to create or write or paint or do anything, just the fact of trying to do it and doing it with other people is worth the journey because you're elevating yourself from getting out of the chair. And if you get around people that love what they're doing, whether you're studying carpentry or cooking or anything, you can get better. And those really good people will always show you how to make those onions simmer just at the right direction before you put the next part in, put the next part in, and then make a soup that's really good. Well, here we are in Boulder, Colorado in the year 2015 on a, such a beautiful night. And while the rest of the country may have snow and ice here, the sun and the stars are shining bright. The E-Town light that is spreading right here at the moment and always on the air is something that shows that music and poetry and art is something that all of us can share. Now, Nick Foster, when I met him back in 1980, he was playing with Hot Rise in the middle of the night. I never dreamed that all these years later we'd be here having so much fun and getting everything right. So I can only say thank you to the great jam session creator in the sky for making it possible today to be here and do things in that very, very, very special E-Town way, where what comes before and what comes after is determined by celebrating the magic of now at the moment right here. And that whatever you do, wherever you've been, we have to spread and share a little good cheer. So without further ado for all of you, since I don't want that introduction to be too long, and tire out everybody before they even get a chance to listen to what was the original song. <laughs> I can only say that really doing this doesn't mean that I'm certifiably crazy. I'm just inspired by E-Town and Boulder, Colorado in this special version of Pull My Daisy. <laughs> Tip my cup, all my doors are open. Hop my hot for coconuts, all my eggs are broken. Hop my heart song, harp my life. Seraphs hold me steady. Hit my angels, harp my life. Lay it on the needy. Hop my heart song, harp my life. Seraphs hold me steady. Hit my angel heart by life, lit on the needy. Well, when Jack and Neil and Alan and I wrote this song way back in 1959, never thought on this beautiful February evening in 2015 I'd feel so fine to share a little moment with you. We hope when the song is through, you'll go home and create something yourself or put those self-help videos on someone else's shelf just to naturally take your own creativity because we're all born with that as well as other little spontaneity now you all know that or you probably wouldn't be living here or wouldn't be listening to what we're doing tonight but it bears repeating cause it's truthful and it's right so without a further ado, I've got a special treat for you. He's not only a master of bluegrass as well, but he's really got a story to tell. Nick Foster playing his guitar 
but he couldn't have made it any more beautiful or any softer Cause it was just perfect, you know Just the way the music should go Well, let's not forget the amazing grace That always brings a smile on everybody's face Cause when he plays his bass for you He'll show the gracefulness is really through Not too much more that I've got to say We're going to have a little virtuoso play from day Charles Dickens who said that's some hellacious bass picking and if he didn't say it he should have said it cause that's revisionist history at its best so I'm going to play a little solo for you even though I didn't have a request <laughs> I couldn't fit my French horn and overhead baggage but my penny whistles are portable don't you know so I'm going to play a little penny whistle solo Harp my life, spread it on the needy. Just remember, if you're in E Town, don't ever be greedy. You can make up the own lyrics yourself. Whether you're here or on the island of well, just tap into your spontaneity. You can do it so easily, don't you see? That's the way Jack Kerouac and Neil Wayback heard people scat singing in Five Points, Colorado in Denver in 1943. Actually, it was 1947, but we don't want to get too particular or accurate because otherwise we might think that they're going to be disturbed if I made a mistake and they're up there checking it out on E-Town broadcast up in heaven. But the music always tells the story So when Jack Kerouac Actually back in 1953 Was still in his football glory But 
after his great athletic skills and thrills and his A average as an English literature student, his father, who only spoke French to him at home, said, Jackie, mon cher, si tu restes ici toute la vie au lol, sûrement tu es obligé un jour à travailler comme, comme ta mère toute la vie dans une factory. Which means, man, you better get out of town or you're going to end up working in a factory like your mother has done all of your life. And you won't even get started before it's through. So Jack, using his football skills and scholarship, went to prestigious Horace Mann in New York City. He graduated so well that he got a scholarship into prestigious Ivy League-covered Columbia U. And Lou Little, the great coach, had hopes for him, but the second week of practice, Jack broke his leg. And like Lou Little himself, who was such a great coach, Jack, with his Franco-American background, was too proud to grovel and beg. So he split the scene, and after writing the 10th version of On the Road in 1951 in three weeks, not taking Benzedrine and getting stoned, but simply revising what he'd already been writing for years in a little masterpiece, which suddenly came out years later on the scroll. It took six years of rejection and no inspection, but it didn't really take its toll. And finally, September 7th of 1957, Gilbert Milstein, the third critic who realized that Dostoevsky, Jack Kerouac, Charles Dickens, Charlie Parker, Bela Bartok, Franz Klein, Rembrandt, and all the members of the band here tonight at E-Town all have something in common, which is beautiful dedication and soulfulness and excellence of execution every day. Gave it an incredibly great review and blew all the critics and the literateur of New York City's quality lit set forever away. So now all these years later, for everyone here in Boulder, Colorado tonight, whether you want to sing, paint, play, act, or even try to write, just remember that we're all born with spontaneity and creativity. So let's everyone pull our day. So that, that's what it's like to be spontaneous. I've been wondering all these oh. years. But sometimes it's also possible to overdo it. Yeah. And that's why the greatest, but, the greatest 20th century, past 20th century's invention in the age of technocracy is the eraser and the wastebasket. But you know, you can do things spontaneously, and then if you get something good out of that, you can use a little of that when you're sitting down in that chair trying to write a symphony or a book or a novel or a letter and take the little tidbit that might be of use and if nothing's of use, at least take the good experience to give you energy, not to have the self-indulgence time to have writer's block. Right. 